Yo, what is going on YouTube? Uzi here with my first ever live commentary. I know it's crazy. I don't even think I've saw John doing live commentary, but it's my first one ever. I'm gonna be <coughs> bringing you guys a full on a full game of an online ranked match. I'm gonna be using the cool one I have. I have a custom player that's here and I'm using this Arizona on defense. I don't know why, I just like using the rounds. It seems like it's the only thing I can win. It's weird, I don't know. But let's jump right into this. Now, like I said, this is my first live commentary ever, so if you guys have any tips, feedback, please leave me this bad feedback. Just let me know in the comments below. And if you like it, you know, why don't you hit the subscribe button? It would mean a lot. Anyway, here we go. Hopefully we don't get smashed up at the end of the top 100 opponent and get totally smashed in my first live commentary ever. Don't want that to happen. I want to impress my subs, you know? Let's see. Uh, can't find anybody to play. But, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for the trash upload earlier. I don't know why it was like that. I don't know why the quality was like that. I really don't know. And, uh, also another thing I want to say is, I know I've only been posting Madden. If you guys want to see anything else, like any other game, any other game modes on that, want to see a CFM series, do you want to see a fantasy draft, or you just have a franchise with a certain team, or anything like that, career mode, if you guys want to see anything, just let me know. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Rodgers Packers going up against Griffin's Browns. So let's get out to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. Here's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are just a stone's throw away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Green Bay Packers and the Cleveland Browns. Michigan man, Darius Jackson on the carry. Look at the spin. Balance. Ten yards on the pickup there. And it'll give the Browns a first down. Well, it certainly appears that they had a pretty good formula how to combat waiting around all day to play a night game. Came right out, smacked them, and gained big yardage because it's tough for a coach. How much time do you spend with a team? How much time do you meet? How often do you actually eat meals? Do you get them out of the hotel? It's a tough, tough task to have them ready to play a night game when they've had to sit around all day and usually watch other people get ready to play as well. Now it's Jackson. They find some open field here. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. That was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Now they'll run it on the toss. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here. It's second and 12. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now they'll throw it with Griffin. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. 
Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. On the ground, this is Jackson. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll throw on first down with Griffin. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Really excellent job there, just going up and getting it. Brandon, I'm a defender. I shouldn't be this excited, but what a play by the receiver downfield to elevate and make the catch. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. And that's been a pretty darn good drive to start things off here in this game. Move the ball downfield well, and after that run, they're set up at first and goal. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. And a peek at the defense for the Packers. Clay Matthews is an absolute force. Multiple Pro Bowls as an outside linebacker. He can swing inside and create the same havoc. And all oh, that did he drop it he dropped it in the end zone can this defense get the stop on the opening drive here's third and goal a fake to Crowell now it's Griffin buying time to his left and incomplete here to bring up fourth down as the rookie couldn't haul it in after all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had every... Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. And Parkey's kick is good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. They go play action here on first down. Flushed out right. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be a second down. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Rodgers to throw on second down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football, but they face a second and long to start things out. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. For Montgomery, the wild card round got his knee twisted, left the game for them, but came back late in the fourth, though, so that's a good sign. He's another piece that they need going forward. A big sigh of relief for the Packers offense and the team overall to see Montgomery back in the lineup. Since he moved from receiver to running back, it helped solidify the Packers running game. And got his man complete. 20, 10, touchdown, Packers. Randall Cobb, 79 yards, and the Packers have taken the lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, 
That meant fly route, go. Uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And the Browns offense back out there ready to take over. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. They'll run it with Jackson. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Here's Griffin to throw. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. On the run, this is Jackson. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no game. Here we go on fourth down with Griffin to the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. I don't know if I agree with that. I guess they don't care if I agree with that. But, boy, you have to be surprised by that, right? I definitely was surprised that they decided to go for it in this situation. And he fires one that's intercepted. And it's ha-ha Clinton Dix with a pick. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. And now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. But no matter what the defense throws at them, they feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Now well, Rodgers not pleased with the setup. He's going to take a timeout. That's their second, so they'll have one remaining here in this second quarter. We'll be right back. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Any team that runs the toss and runs it successfully, that means they win the battle on the edges. That means you seal the edge in order to let your back get to the corner. They got it done there for a very nice game. While the time permits, let's look back at the AFC wild card round. Top performers, I know you have to look at Pittsburgh and what Brown and Bell did on offense. They were spectacular. Yeah, let's start with the offense because I thought Antonio Brown got them off to an amazing start. Two touchdowns, long ones. In his first three catches, they got off to a 14 to nothing lead, never really looked back. And I thought Le'Veon Bell, the way he ran the ball, caught the ball, everything he did and his patience in running, phenomenal. But how about Houston? To me, the key was defense. Jadevian Clowney right out of the gate was almost unblockable, and Whitney Merciless became that as the game went on. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, partner, they might want to tear up your scouting reports a little bit here because they just broke tendency. Third down, you don't ordinarily see a toss. <laughs> they ran it, and they ran it really well and picked up the first down. I love the way the edges were sealed, which allowed him to get to the corner. They come up in an offset eye. Now they'll run it on the toss, and they will stop it. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now that's the type of play that will fire up a defense, holding the one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, but they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Give him nine on the play, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Still in search of the first down after that last completion. 
And it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Throwing now is Rodgers. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Now they'll run it on the toss. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. That second down run, a big help. The seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now it's Rodgers. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Charles, switching gears as we glance at the NFL playoff picture and what's left, you got the Blue Bloods remaining. This decade, New England has been in the divisional round all seven years. Seattle and Green Bay now six of the seven. That's consistency. That it is, and that means in the divisional round, you have teams like Houston and Atlanta that are really trying to crash the party. Neither one of them has been to a Super Bowl yet. Yeah, we'll see if they can get that done. Should be an interesting weekend of football. Going for the deep ball. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either put it off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big-time play right there. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. A run here for starts. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. You give them five yards there and it's enough for the first. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Did you see that route the way that I did? I thought they were trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not really. It came off of that guy, the deep guy. It came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And now they're in the hurry up. To throw is Rodgers. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful? You're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is. 
to not play too much zone. Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe and he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Randall Cobb, his second touchdown of the night. And the Packers add on to their lead. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Gets it to Gordon. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field that you have to cover, and when the offense finds an area that you're not in, that's where they throw the football. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, you know what we need to do? We need to give a hat tip to two guys that are riding off into the sunset. Steve Smith and Robert Mathis both have announced the end of their careers. Let's we'll start with Robert Mathis. We see all the tributes coming from around the league. Everyone talk about what an exceptional pro Robert Mathis has been throughout his career. And the guy has over 120 sacks in his career as well. And how about Steve Smith? Came into the league as a punt returner and became a WR1. How about that? One of the all-timers. I think both of them are going to merit Hall of Fame consideration, and both of them should get plenty of votes. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Crowell. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. Fourth down, here's RG3. That's complete, it's Gordon. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. That one good for 14 yards. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Now Griffin. Pryor has it complete. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns with a deficit. They're trailing, but with the football here to start the fourth. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On second down, Griffin being chased out left. And this is incomplete. The tight end, Gary Barnage, the intended receiver. And it's third down. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. On third down, Griffin. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. To throw is RG3. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. 
And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Call it a pickup of 7, and it'll make it a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running back. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A great play there. A 9-yard touchdown run. And the Browns are back with it a score. Here we go. The Browns will go for two. Griffin will try and throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the Michigan man, Jake Ryan. Well, as most teams do in their two-point attempt, they pass the ball. Instead, it gets intercepted. And remember, if you pick it off, you got a chance to take it all the way back at two points yourself, right? Yeah, not the case here. That's why you got to be really careful with those throws, especially to the outside. And he'll go down at the two-yard line. What a disaster there. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. That one goes for 24 yards. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Throwing is Rodgers. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Emmanuel Agba in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. They come up in an offset eye. Rodgers going to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And fourth down coming up. Here's Jacob Shum now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. That's taken on the 25. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Time starting to run out here in the fourth. This defense just trying to keep the offense off the board and preserve this potential victory. It's caught. It's Barnage over the middle. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. He's back to throw. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? 
the better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Shift together here from the D-line. On second down, here's Crowell. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers. There's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, Guys are playing the inside, those inside linebackers. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. They run again with Jackson. And they're going to get him down, but not before a pretty good run right there. A good run, eight yards there, and it'll be second and going. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every and he's across for the touchdown, and it's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. Some many practices we watched over time where the offense works on scoring late in the game and finding a way to win, as we just saw there. Just saw it right there. Now can they preserve that advantage that they just got? Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This is taken near the 13. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. So you're right there, but obviously the clock is not your friend. How do you handle this situation? You're thinking two plays. One, to get yourself in position for the second one. Whether you're able to get into field goal range or you have to try another deep pass, another Hail Mary. But you're trying to get the first one to a receiver, get out of bounds, and give yourself a chance to set things up for an easier shot at it. Let's see if they now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. One final try for Rodgers. We've seen this before. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Jamar Taylor. And that is going to seal this victory as time runs out. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here. Coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it. And they came up with the interception and sealed their victory.